all right so at this point then you have um you're navigating all of this mm-hmm. um and, and and so um you're still however at vision africa yes, yeah. and 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 it's at the height of these things working mm-hmm. with government um pushing the envelope quite well with yeah. with with the local and county governments mm-hmm. and um and having quite some impact mm-hmm. you know and at an at, at an individual level also um you know uh, processing qu- qu- quite a bit then mm-hmm. then what happens so again i guess it's a, a story of a few pieces coming together mm-hmm. so one a sense that the team i'd been kind of walking with at, at seed of hope and vision africa they had two separate teams yeah that those teams were kind of ready to stand on their own two feet right um and one of the things we were always kind of very proud of at mm-hmm. both seed of hope and vision africa was mm-hmm. that it it grew from the roots up here it wasn't somebody in the uk who had an idea and started it from there and flew in to save the world it it started from here and and, and yes my grandparents weren't from here but they were living here and experiencing everything here as they decided this was what they they had to do um and so my one of my big questions was okay this team is kind of ready to stand on their own two feet if i chose to transition out how do we make sure we maintain that kenyan rootedness of of all that we do and how do we be intentional about that in any transition the same time i felt like it was just becoming more and more difficult to fundraise without staff in the uk to help fundraise mm-hmm. because a lot of our fundraising was then being done through uk trusts and foundations mm-hmm. Um, and if they wanted to meet somebody from the organization, if they wanted to um, see somebody face to face, it was just difficult because mm. we didn't have anybody there. Mm. Um, and so we were thinking about what it would mean to build that capacity kind of as a human resource mm. in, in the UK. And again, then how you keep that balance and make sure that the Kenyan team continue to be the ones in control. Um, I think I'd also just reached a point um, that's now kind of 2016, 2017, where I'd done almost 15 years <laughs> between founding Seed of Hope and, yeah. and this whole journey with Vision Africa. And it was mm. just kind of time mm-hmm. to move on. Mm. I have to say, having really only ever worked for one organization, mm. and you do ask yourself questions of, would anybody else ever want me? Do I have a skill set that applies mm. beyond mm. this entity? <laughs> mm. um, so there were big questions, but mm. just that sense that maybe it's time to try something else. Mm. Um, Vision Africa had never paid mm. a great salary, so mm. there was increasing family pressure. Mm. At that point, we had two kids. I was pregnant with our third. Mm. Um, so increasing family pressure to mm-hmm. pay the bills. Mm. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, with both of us mm. being really mm. in similar positions, mm. Um, mm. running organizations that didn't make millions of shillings mm. and, and were focused on very different things. Mm. And, and so, yeah, mm. trying to figure out how you continue to pursue passion and calling mm. and, and still mm food on the table and, mm. and all of that mm. um and and yeah um i guess yeah all of those things coming together and, and i wrote to the board at vision africa and i said look i think it's time um i've done all these years these are the things that are going on for me personally i think mm. it's time to transition out and mm. um, but i'm willing to give up to 12 months notice mm. to allow us to together figure out what mm. it looks like to mm. put things in place so that mm it doesn't all fall apart mm. <laughs> when I'm gone. Mm. Um, and so we did that. I think mm. I gave them that notice. I think it must have been around the December. No, sorry, that's yeah, maybe around the December of 2016, November, December of 2016, mm. mm-hmm. um, maybe even earlier. Anyway, mm. Mm. Um, gave them that notice. Of mm. course, there was some pushback, and mm. but mm. my decision was made. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we began to think about what it would look like to establish leadership for the organization mm-hmm. um, as I transition out. Mm-hmm. And so we decided to appoint leadership for the Seed of Hope and Vision Africa teams from within the teams. Right. So my focus then became kind of readying those people for mm-hmm. leadership and mm-hmm. um, two amazing women who mm-hmm. still lead each mm-hmm. organization mm-hmm. Um, today. Mm-hmm. Um, and we decided to look for somebody in the UK who mm-hmm. we could employ and mm-hmm. um, who would offer some leadership strength, but mm-hmm. would also have a big focus on fundraising. Mm-hmm. Um, we thankfully found somebody who had done work here before, was mm-hmm. now based in the UK, mm-hmm. um, had to some extent the same perspective as us on um, the need for things to be owned and rooted and driven from here mm-hmm. um, but but also just had a breadth of experience particularly mm. in that kind of UK international development space mm-hmm. um, that, that offered value mm. to us and brought the right kind of expertise mm-hmm. so 
Um, kind of parallel to that, I was also beginning to think what's next for me. Mm. Um, I had my third baby. Um, while I was at home on maternity leave was reading things that come into my inbox that I wouldn't normally have read. Mm. <laughs> All those newsletters and things mm -hmm. that um, we kind of think, oh, we'll read those later. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, by chance, one day happened to open a, lead a, a newsletter and came across um, Dignitas mm -hmm. um, and decided for some reason to Google it, do a little bit more um, research and discovered that actually I'd met the founder before mm. um, and so decided just to send her an email and say mm. can we meet for a chat mm. um, and wasn't even necessarily looking for a job mm. <laughs> but really just opening up those conversations about what could come next. Mm. Um, I was only a month or so into maternity leave so mm. was still very much focused on kind mm. of new baby and, mm. and all of that mm. and, and still had to go back and finish off at, at Vision Africa. I hadn't mm. formally left. Mm -hmm. Um, so met with Tiffany, the founder of Dignitas, um, asked her just, I mean, we just shared our journeys. Mm -hmm. um, she had also been a founder mm. around the same time. Mm. Some of our experience kind of resonated across mm. um, getting to know each other. And, mm. and she did share that they had been looking for a while for a new um, mm. leader. Mm. Um, they, she would tried to transition out the year before. They had hired somebody. It didn't work out. Mm. They're now back looking again, but mm -hmm. I think very cautiously. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, and so I guess that began what became a series of conversations and eventually mm. a, a series of interviews. As I say, they were very cautious. It was mm. a very thorough process. Mm. <laughs> and eventually the, the job offer that brought me to where I am today. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as I say, parallel to that, mm -hmm. we were doing this recruitment at Vision Africa. I mm. was kind of readying the team for my transition out mm. um, and kind of just trying to wrap up loose ends. Mm. Um, mm. So through to the end of 2017, mm. um, I was still um, doing some work for Vision Africa. Right. Um, and then started, did some small consultancy work for Dignitas yeah. towards the end of the year. So we're yeah. juggling both. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, January 2018, transitioned full time uh, into Dignitas. To, into Dignitas. Mm -hmm. We'll take the journey for Dignitas <laughs> now in the third, uh, in the third take uh, when you come back.